we came up in an industrial economy. An industrial economy is one built on management. And management is not the same as leadership. Management is paying people and using your authority to tell them what to do. Management is making everything a little bit better, a little bit faster, and a little bit cheaper in a reliable way. We need managers. Fast food restaurants don't work without managers. But leadership is different. Leadership is voluntary. You can choose to lead and you can choose to follow. That's what makes it not management, is that we have voluntarily signed up to change the game. And the essence of leadership is it must be followed by the sentence, this might not work. Because if you're sure it's going to work, well, then go please manage. Go please manage. If you're sure that doing this action is going to cause that result, that's management. Leadership is exploring the edges. Leadership is this idea of finding problems and solving them. And one of the definitions of a problem is it's solvable. If it's not solvable, well, then it's not a problem. It's a reality. I made these beautiful letterpress cards. And on one side, it says problem. And what I did was I challenged the people in the event to write down the problem they'd been wrestling with, the hard thing, the thing that if they could solve it, so many things in their life would get better. And then I said, okay, hand it to the person sitting next to you, to that stranger sitting next to you. And on the other side of the card, it said solution. And the idea of the problem solution card was simple. If that person sitting next to you can write down something that's going to solve your problem, even though it's going to cause you a disruption, even though it might cause you to wonder about what happens after that, even though it might cause discomfort, are you willing to do it? Because if you're not willing to do it, if that feeling inside of you, before you even see what they wrote down, is one of ambivalence, then I'm not really sure you have a problem. I think that you are embracing the fact that things aren't exactly right, because you like leaning against it. Pressfield calls this resistance. Resistance is our fear of being wrong. Resistance is our fear of leaning into something that might not work. Resistance is our fear of change. Some of you at this point say, no, you know what? I would rather do what I'm told. You know what? I would rather embrace the safety of giving responsibility to my boss. And that's where we get to the division between responsibility and authority. Because if you work in any sort of institution, authority is well delineated. Everyone knows who the boss is. Everyone knows who the boss's boss is. You have an org chart. Your org chart is filled with squares. Why are they square? They're square because if someone leaves, you can just put another person who's square shaped into the hole. But useful organizations, thrilling organizations, they don't have square shaped org charts. They have jigsaw puzzles where every single person is a unique shape, where they are seeking people who want to be indispensable, who want to make a difference, who want to lean in to what is possible. So what I'm getting to here halfway through is the idea of enrollment. Are you enrolled in the journey? We have to enroll. I'm going over there. Do you want to come? That what it means to be enrolled is that you will be so frustrated at the lack of forward motion that you will act the same way as if the company forgot to send you a paycheck this week. Where is it? Where is it? That the point of every meeting is to figure out how are we going to move this forward? So is it going to happen suddenly all at once? Of course not. I was talking to Martha Beck the other day, and she told me this riff that was brilliant, which is, if you are on a flight from New York to Helsinki and the plane moves, veers half a degree every half hour, you will not feel it. But you will also not land in Helsinki. You will land in Rome because it's the gradual changes and shifts in our culture that end up leading to the long-term transformations that we seek. So I have very few tactics for you today. This isn't about tactics. You don't have a tactics problem. It was really clear from your responses to Lisa's talk. You don't have a tactics problem. You know what the tactics are. What you're asking is, where is the authority? 
Who will let me do this? How do I get my boss to say yes? That what we ask, what people ask the most after one of my talks is I'd love to do this kind of stuff, but my boss won't let me, which is an acknowledgement that we live in an industrial world, but it's also an honest appraisal of how afraid we are of responsibility. Because the thing is, companies make it really hard to get more authority. Authority is hard to find. But responsibility, responsibility, they give out like candy. If you're willing to take responsibility and give away credit, you can do almost anything you want in an organization if it's in the spirit of where that organization is going. So I want to start with the daring assertion that I'm not sure you want to change the game. I think that many people would like to get back to normal. The problem is you can't step in the same river twice. There's no going back to normal. This is normal. The next thing is normal. The whole idea that I can press a few keys and there's a trillion dollars worth of value in Bitcoin online, that is now normal. The shifting in relationships and status roles and the way we've been indoctrinated, all of it is turning upside down. So the question we have to start with is, are you serious? Are you actually interested in changing the game? Or would you rather have someone change the game on you? And then you'll have to struggle to catch up. Place you worked two years ago, perfect. The systems that we were used to, the idea of a bookstore, the idea of a restaurant, perfect. What do I mean by perfect? And perfect means you're playing the game and winning well enough to get paid to play the game. And so we lived in a world that was perfect, the same way Western Union did when it was dominating the telegram business. And then Alexander Graham Bell shows up with the telephone, and suddenly he's created something that's impossible. And the people at Western Union had a chance to buy the telephone for almost nothing. When I was at Yahoo, we had a chance to buy Google for $10 million. Something impossible shows up. And the people who are in the business of dealing with perfect usually say no.